In past speeches, students have asked me, do we need references for our demonstration speech? When I reply, yes, you do, their next comment is, but I want to show how to bake a chocolate cake. How do I get re resources for that? To answer that question, let's analyze the construction of a demonstration speech. A demonstration speech is a subset of speeches to inform. They do require bibliography and at least three resources. They should be three to 15 minutes long because typically I have found that demonstration speeches take a little longer to manage because you are handling uh, manipulatables and you need to have time to deal with your props. Let's take a look at our chocolate cake example. There are three areas that you can use to expand and those include the history of chocolate, the history of leavening, and the history of ovens. When you are making a chocolate cake, you can cream, you first cream the sugar and shortening together. You could, by the way, cover different kinds of shortening. You could talk about the different kinds of sugars or sweeteners. You then add eggs. Some research opportunities here are cholesterol and whether or not eggs are a health food or an unhealthy food. You then add soda and sour cream and a tablespoon of baking powder. This is where we get an, our next research opportunity, which is soda as a leavening, which can include cream of tartar or gypsum, which cause, is a chemical reaction that causes bubbles. So let's take a look at how we would expand some of that. If we were looking at chocolate, we could go to Mesoamerica, where the Almecs served it as a bitter drink around 1900 BC or earlier. They also considered it a mood enhancer or an aphrodisiac. They added roasted ground chili peppers and vanilla and spices and honey to their mixture. It eventually was transported to Spain in around the 1500s where it was then taken to France and from France to Great Britain and then to the world. Chocolate is a great topic for uh, expanding history. Uh, the history of leavening includes potash, pearl ash, and then on to our modern baking soda. Oh, and in there is sodi saleratus. I'm not going to elaborate on those. I will publish the references online. There are some real surprises in the early history of baking soda. You could even go into the history of cake making, which includes making boiled or bagged puddings, which is an interesting process. Finally, as you are baking your cake, you're going to add flour, which is a whole other research opportunity, which includes wheat flour and the current uh, finding that some people have wheat allergies which can bring you to alternative flours, which include rice flour, corn flour, bean flours, and sorghum. All of these are great opportunities for research. You can look at ovens. Ovens were not always temperature controlled where you could set a timer. One of the old time tests, in fact, this was done when I was a little girl, was to throw a handful of flour into the oven and see if it would turn brown. If it turned brown, then the oven was hot enough to bake a cake. You could look at other kinds of ovens, including outdoor or camp ovens. All artifacts that can be demonstrated can be similarly broken down into their parts and their histories and illustrated. These include things like computers, auto parts, clothing, sewing. So, Yes, all demonstration speeches have component parts that could include research, and you should for this class. Just showing your audience how to do something is not enough. You should also explain why a thing is done in a particular way and give a history of it. It is not enough to show how it is, how to wash your hands, for example, you could go into the history of why hand washing was discovered to be such an important thing.
the listener should know why the object you are demonstrating is important enough that you will want to share it with the class.